Good morning, friends. It's so great to be back with you this morning. I hope that you all had a great week. Um, today, we're going to be talking about possessions, what Jesus talks about with our possessions. But before we jump into that, why don't we pray? Lord, I come to you now and I thank you so much for today. Lord, I thank you that no matter what we might have in life, you are still greater. And I pray that we remember that each and every day. Lord, we love you so much. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. So as I said, uh, this week we're talking about possession. I have some fun stuff today. I have a Frisbee. I have a giant dice. I have a crown. But what does this mean? And what, what does it mean for Jesus? Well, we're going to jump into that in just a second. So let me take off my crown and my Frisbee and stuff and... Let's jump right in to our big picture question, which is this. What did Jesus teach when he was on earth? Jesus taught about God and his kingdom. He taught that all scripture is about him. So today our lesson, our story comes from the book of Luke, chapter 12. And basically it is chapter 12. Uh, verses 1 through 34. So we're going to read that together and then we'll watch our Bible story video. Meanwhile, the crowds grew into the thousands were milling around about and stepping on each other. Jesus turned first to his disciples and warned them, Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, their hypocrisy. The time is coming when everything will be covered up, that everything covered will be revealed. And all that is secret will be made known to all. Whatever you have said in the dark will be heard in the light. Whatever you have whispered behind closed doors will be shouted from the housetops for all to hear. Dear friends, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot do any more to you after that. But I tell you whom you should to fear. Fear God who has the power to kill you and then throw you into hell. Yes, he's the one to fear. What's the price of five sparrows? Two copper coins. Yet God does not forget a single one of them. And the very hairs on your head are numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. I tell you the truth. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, the Son of Man, will also acknowledge in the presence of God's angels. But anyone who denies me here on earth will be denied before God's angels. Anyone who speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemies the Holy Spirit And when you are brought to trial in the synagogues before the rulers and authorities, don't worry about how to defend yourself or what to say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at the time what needs to be said. Then someone called from the crowd, Teacher, please teach my brother, or tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Jesus replied, Friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all of my wheat and other goods. I'll, stick ba I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. Then, who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. Then turning to his disciples, Jesus said, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or clothes to wear. For life is more than food, your body is more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for God feeds them. And you are far more valuable to him than any birds. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? 
And if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, then what's the use of worrying over bigger things? Look at the little ones and how they grow. Or lilies. Wow, excuse me. Let me try that again. Verse 27. Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make it their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? And don't be concerned about what to eat or drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world. But your Father is already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God ab above all else, and he will give you everything you need. Don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your Father great happiness to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. This will store up treasure for you in heaven. And the purses of heaven never get old or develop holes. Your treasure will be safe. No thief can steal it. No moth can destroy it. Wherever your treasure is, there the desire of your heart will be also. What a great Bible passage. So why don't we take a look at this week's Bible story video to break it down. Thousands of people came together to listen to Jesus' teachings. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share our father's inheritance with me. Jesus said, Watch out and be on guard against all greed. True life is not found in what you own. Then Jesus told the people a parable. A rich man owned land that produced many crops. He didn't have anywhere to store all of his crops, so he said to himself, I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have so much stored up that I can stop working and relax. But God told the man, you are a fool. You will die this very night. And then what good is everything you have stored up? Jesus told this story as a warning for any person who stores up treasure on earth and is not generous toward God. Then Jesus told his disciples, do not worry about your life or your body, what you will eat or what you will wear. Think about the birds. They do not plant or collect grain, yet God feeds them. Aren't you worth more than birds? Jesus also said, think about the wildflowers. They don't work or make clothing, yet they are lovelier than any king in his fancy clothes. If that is how God takes care of grass, which grows today and is cut down tomorrow, how much more will he do for you? Jesus told his disciples not to worry about food or drink. Seek God's kingdom, he said, and God will provide what you need. God is happy to give his children the kingdom. Finally, Jesus said, sell your possessions and give to the poor. A thief can take away treasure on earth, but treasure stored in heaven lasts forever. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus is our greatest treasure. Jesus left his place in heaven to live humbly on earth. Jesus obeyed God to set up his kingdom. We can give generously and trust God to provide everything we need. Jesus is our greatest treasure. Jesus left his place in heaven to live humbly here on earth. Jesus obeyed God to set up his kingdom. We can give generously and trust God to provide everything we need. Man, that story is so incredible. This person was so worried about today and he wasn't focused on tomorrow. Uh, he wanted to store up and store up and and Jesus said, you're going to die today. And then what? What will you have? Nothing. And I think sometimes in our lives, we are so focused on the future that we forget to stop and, and live in the present. The very last verse that we read this morning, verse 34, wherever your treasure is, the desires of your heart will be also. I want you guys to think about that. Think about 
where you put your time and your effort and possibly if, especially your money once you get older where you put those things that's where your heart is um, and when you when you put all those things towards Jesus and towards um, the kingdom then you'll see that that's where your heart's going to be um, and especially when you get older with your money um, tithing is so important and um, Pastor Ron says this all the time that when you tithe when you give your money to the Lord you're saying money you're not the God of me you don't control me God you do you control you're in control so I want to encourage you um, to <clears throat> begin that process now start young you know if you have an allowance or if you do chores or something and, and you get money I would encourage you to give back to the Lord and and that habit as you start younger it will just be natural as you get older. Uh, I want to encourage you guys to do that. It's so important, so important to give and to tie it. And as the story said, I, I just love the different examples that Jesus uses. You know, he says, he says, what are you worried about? He the numbers on the hairs of your head are counted. God knows how many hairs are on our head. And for me, there's not a lot of hair on my head, okay? But he still knows the number. He knows the number of hairs in my beard. On all of your heads. And that is why we're so uniquely formed and created and loved by God. Um, and, and if you continue and you read through the story and you see some of the other things that he says, you know, look at the ravens, look at the, the lilies, the flowers. You know, they don't store up food, yet God provides for them. And if he's going to provide for them, how much more is he going to provide for us? We have to remember that, that God's going to provide for us. And it's going to be hard sometimes. We're going to struggle with it. We're going to have times where we're like, Lord, how? how? How are you going to provide? And those are the times when we have to trust him the most. And that's the times when we'll see our faith grow the most is when we can't do it on our own. When God can do it for His glory. Um, and that's the only way. When God does it, that's the only way we can do it. I want you guys to think about this question. As we started this morning, I had some fun stuff. I had my crown, my frisbee, my giant dice. So here's my question. Is it wrong to have a lot of possessions? Is it wrong to have a lot of stuff? Why or why not? Maybe talk it over with your siblings or with your parents. See what they say. See if they say if it's wrong to have a lot of possessions, a lot of, a lot of things. Um, here's the deal. It's not wrong to have all of these things, but it's wrong to put all of these things before Jesus. Whether we have a little or we have a lot, Jesus should come first. You know, we, we live in a country where we're so blessed by a lot of things. <coughs> oh, oh. Excuse me. Sorry about that. We are blessed to live in a country where we have so much. Uh, if you've ever gotten to go on a mission trip, or maybe your parents have, you see how people live and love Jesus. I had the opportunity to go to Bolivia in 2011, which is in Central America. And I went and I stayed at an orphanage there, and it was crazy to see just how much I take for granted every day. Uh, for instance, we didn't have hot water, so we had to take cold showers for two weeks. We um, didn't have air conditioning, and it was summertime when I went to Bolivia, so it was very warm. Um, we, we had to have special water. We couldn't just drink water from the faucet like we can here. But those kids that we got to hang out with, and the people there were so joyful for everything they had. And it really convicted me because I take so much for granted. I take for granted that I can just fill up my water bottle. I take for granted that I can go home to a, a home that's got air conditioning or in the wintertime it's got heating. So I just want to encourage you guys this morning that no matter what, we need to be thankful. And we need to, we need to trust the Lord for what he is doing and what he has done. 
And that leads us to our key passage for this unit, which comes from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 25 and 26. It says this, I am telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and remind you of everything that I have told you. When we forget what is true about God, we can ask the Holy Spirit to remind us of what Jesus is and, and what Jesus taught us about himself. The Holy Spirit can help us understand God's Word. I want you guys to remember that. And this is a great encouragement for me, and I hope it is for you, that no matter where we're at, no matter what we're doing in our life, the Holy Spirit is with us, which means God is with us. God is walking through this life with us. He's walking through this life together with us. Um, you know, last week we celebrated the 4th of July, and maybe some of you got to shoot off fireworks. I'll tell you, favorite things. The 4th of July is one of my favorite holidays because not only do we get to set off fireworks and, and have fun, but it's a reminder that we are a free country. And I think um, on Sunday mornings, I get that reminder as well when I have the opportunity to come to church and I have the opportunity to, to see you. That's my favorite part of Sunday mornings is seeing you guys but to remind myself that I'm free in Christ. We have all these freedoms that we get to enjoy living in America, but we have so much more in Christ. And I just want to encourage you guys this morning that no matter what is going on in your life, no matter how much stuff you have, no matter how many things you have or what you're doing, God is with you. And ultimately he's the best, best possession we could have. So I want to encourage you, um, if you have never made a decision and you feel that tug in your heart, talk to someone about it. Call, Have your parents call me. I'll talk to you about it. Talk to your parents. I can tell you the exact place I was when I felt Jesus tug in my heart. I was eight years old. It was after school. My brother Andrew and I were playing outside and I just, I felt this tug and I knew exactly what it was. And I remember I ran inside and I, I, it was on a Tuesday. And I only know this because we had Wednesday night church. So I ran inside and I was like, Mom, we gotta go to church right now. And she's like, we're going tomorrow, tomorrow's Wednesday. And I'm like, no, 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 we have to go now. And so I convinced her to take me to church because my pastor said, when you feel that tug, come to church immediately, come talk to me. And so I felt the Lord tug at my heart when I was eight years old and I went to church and then I got baptized and I just, I always remember when I got baptized, I felt like the pastor uh, held me under the water for a really long time. Of course I was eight, so I know it wasn't that long, but that was the greatest decision I've made in my life was to follow Jesus. And every day since then, I've been growing to get closer to him. So as we close this morning, I just want to encourage you guys with a couple of things. Number one is that it doesn't matter how much or how little we have. God loves us and he's the ultimate possession that we need. Number two, to get closer to God, you got to start by reading this right here. Read your Bible every day and, and ask questions when you don't understand something. But read your Bible because that's how you're going to connect with the Lord. Number three, it should help us live out our lives. I just pray that um, you guys will understand no matter how much you have, no matter how little you have, God loves you and you can still change the world. Uh, you can be content with what you have. Um, so why don't we pray and we'll wrap up for this morning. Lord, I come to you now again and I thank you for this great lesson that no matter what we might have, ultimately seeking you and, and following you is what we need and is the ultimate possession for us. I pray that we would seek you first in all that we do. Lord, I pray for all of these boys and girls. I pray they have a great summer uh, filled with lots of fun activities. And, and I 
can't wait for the day when we're all back together again under normal circumstances here at church. Lord, we love you so much. I thank you for this time together this morning. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, have a great week. I will see you next Sunday morning right here.